Would you like to learn to play harmonics on the harp? In this video I will walk you through how harmonics work, what is the basic technique for playing them for the right and the left hand, because these are two different things, as well as sharing a few tips for making them even more reliable. To get most out of this video, make sure to download the PDF for this episode that you can use to practice your own pieces with harmonics. You will find the link in the description of this episode. Once you're ready, come back to me and we will get started with learning how the harmonics work. When I pluck a harp string in the usual way, for example this low C, and then pluck it again using the harmonics technique, you may notice at least a few changes, differences between these two sounds. First is that the harmonic that I played just now is an octave higher than the string plucked normally. So you could compare the harmonic to a middle C, an octave higher. However, when you play the harmonic C and the middle C, you will notice that these two also differ when it comes to the sound quality. You may get the impression that the middle C has a more full tone, while the harmonic C sounds a bit more pure, as if the sound is more focused. I play these two again for you, so you can listen out for the differences again. This has all to do with what a harmonic is. When you pluck a string normally, your ear hears the fundamental frequency most prominently and that allows you to identify what the note is, in this case that it is a C and that this is the one below middle C. The overall sound is also colored by the presence of various overtones which we can compare to sound ingredients that make this harp sound in the unique way it does. So that middle C that we've just played using our usual technique will have the fundamental frequency of C and it will also have some other tones, the overtones that are blending into the sound. The C that we played as a harmonic, even though it sounds like the same pitch, will not have these overtones and that's why it sounds a little different. Harmonics are a method of isolating overtones by lightly touching the string at certain points and on the harp the most common way is to touch the string exactly halfway through its length to get the harmonic to sound an octave higher. When you pluck a string like that, it doesn't have any more the fundamental note and what you hear most prominently is that first overtone, an octave higher from the bass note. To get a harmonic sound on the harp, for both hands we will use our thumbs to pluck the strings. The other parts of our hands will be used to touch the string while plucking to achieve a harmonic sound and I will show you how to do this in the next part of this video. How to tell if you need to play a harmonic? They are usually marked in your music using a small circle under or over a note, depending which hand is it for. Each note that needs to be played as a harmonic will get its own circle. Usually the circle will be placed next to the note that symbolizes a string that you need to play. So if you see a middle C with a circle over or under, that means that you pluck the middle C string to make the harmonic sound like a high C. Sometimes you may see composers who mark the harmonics using the actual pitch of the note, so if this was the case for the middle C, you would see it marked as a high C, but you would still need to pluck the middle C to achieve the sound of the high C. A bit confusing, I know. But usually this is marked in the music and a bit of text will say that harmonics are marked where they are supposed to sound, so you need to play them an octave lower. If there's no explanation you can usually safely assume that you pluck what you see, but if you think that the harmonic notes are marked suspiciously high, there is a chance that the composer was going for the second system and didn't bother to tell you. However, that's pretty rare these days. Usually harmonics are mostly played up to the high C for the right hand and maybe up to around F above middle C for the left hand. Sometimes you do go higher, but this is quite rare and happens in rather advanced or contemporary pieces. I once played a piece where the left hand was supposed to play harmonic D above high C. That's quite tricky, so I hope I can get it. As you can hear, it's quite faint and a bit tricky to achieve, but you don't have to worry about this too much because it is not very common. When playing harmonics with the right hand, we use our second finger to touch the string while the thumb is plucking. So we approach the string with our thumb pointing up and other fingers pointing down, as if we are about to play a note using our second finger in the usual manner. But then we use the part of the second finger around the first joint to press against the string, and then we pluck above using the thumb and come off right after plucking. 
Before you play, check that you're right in the middle of the string. And if the sound doesn't come out right away, experiment with moving a little bit higher or lower on the string. You want to check where are both ends of the strings, so soundboard and the bridge, or tuning pins if your pedals or levers are engaged. The challenge is to press against the string in a firm way, but at the same time to remain relaxed and keep the softness in the hand to let the harmonic ring. And this can be difficult at the beginning when you haven't felt yet the exact balance between the two, so give yourself plenty of time here. Try to spot when you can make a harmonic ring and then model what kind of movement and feeling in your hand has gotten you here. Remember also to take the time to breathe and soften the hand after every harmonic. The harmonics tend to come out best when you're relaxed, so it's important that you don't stiffen up your body while practicing. For the left hand you can choose to either use the base of your thumb or the side of the palm of your hand, between your little finger and the wrist. It's probably a good idea to get familiar with both these methods, because they can be useful in different contexts, but I suggest that you first focus on one and move to the other when you have a good idea of how the first one works. Let's start with using the base of the thumb. Here we definitely come away from the traditional thumbs up, fingers down harp technique, because we will turn our hands so the fingers are pointing upwards and we can get access to the base of the thumb. Then we press the base of the thumb to the string we are going to pluck and using the thumb to pluck and come off. Remember to keep your body relaxed, not only your hand but also your arm, shoulders and your back. Keep in mind that the sound is not just a result of the hand movement but also of you turning your arm from the elbow. And this movement needs to be very free for the harmonic to ring with a nice sound quality. With this second method I will use the side of my palm, the part just between the little finger and the wrist. The hand here is turned slightly more sideways than with the first method, where your fingers were pointing mostly upwards. With the second method we are still pointing up but more towards the column and you can see the inside of your palm now as it's facing up and more towards you, especially when you arrive towards the end of the movement. To play, you press the side of the palm onto the string and then reach out with the thumb, pluck and move away. It's good to familiarize yourself with both these methods, one at a time. In most cases you can use whichever you're more comfortable with, but there are also some situations when one will be more suitable in the context of a piece. For example, method 1 is helpful when you're playing several harmonics within close range and you would like to have them all ringing for as long as possible. The base of the thumb usually doesn't touch any of the neighboring strings, as opposed to the second method where your palm covers more space on the strings and may dump them as you progress in steps. Some people say that the second method gives you a bit more warmer and rounder sound and if you notice the difference between your sound quality with the two methods, you prefer one over the other, then you may choose to use them in different situations. The other context where the second method is useful is where, when you want to play more than one harmonic with your left hand. This is not a very common request from a composer, so if you're early on in your harp journey you definitely don't need to worry about it just now. This is just to show you what's possible with different methods and that we've got this option when playing the left hand, sadly not the right. Whichever method you are working on at the moment, it may take some time for you to feel what this movement is like, find the right balance between pressing the string, keeping the hand relaxed, as well as the right moment to move away from the string after plucking. So take your time while practicing, make sure to relax your body after each harmonic and be patient with yourself. I promise you will get there. One of the most important aspects to pay attention to is that you're exactly in the middle of a string with the part of your hand that presses on. So not necessarily your thumb being in the middle, but the lower part of the hand that touches the string. I'll share with you some of my tips for making sure that you're exactly where you need to be. First, you need to watch out for the shape of the neck of your harp. Whichever instrument you play, this shape will be slightly different. For the lower strings it may change quite dramatically, as the strings are getting a lot longer, especially on a pedal harp like this one. So you want to keep in mind again where your string starts and where it finishes, and find the point right in between. 
Second tip, if you play a lever or a pedal harp, you need to be aware of your lever or pedal setup. As you may remember from my other video, moving a lever or a pedal does change the length of the vibrating part of the string, and the shorter the string, the higher the sound will be. So let's say you play a C flat string harmonic, and for that you will need to press on the string right here. When I move the pedal now, the string shortens quite a bit. For a string which is as low on the harp as this C, it's almost 6 cm of a difference, so over 2 inches for this particular string. This means that to get your harmonic right, you need to move your hand down by almost an inch or 3 cm, because you divide the length of the string in two to find its center. So if I play that C now, I need to get a bit lower. And if you press the pedal for the second time and move into C sharp, you will have to move your hand even lower to get the harmonic out. And now let me play all three notes so you can see how my position on the string changes. So definitely pay attention to the lever or pedal setup, especially if you play several harmonics and some of them may be affected by different setup than the others. Tip number three, and maybe some harpists will frown upon what I say, but if you're using your own harp then perhaps you can mark the exact point where the harmonic rings on the strings, and practice while referring to that point. I have used this on my own harps using a felt tip pen. Depending on how much you play, the markings usually disappear on their own after a few weeks. So even with a permanent pen, it's not really a permanent change. And while the markings are, are there, they can help you to focus on the technique, because you know that you've already found the point in the middle of the string. If you play a pedal or a lever harp, of course these will be different points depending on your lever or pedal setup. So I would either choose the point which corresponds to the key that you use most, or a setup that matches what is required for a particular piece that you're playing. So let's say that you're working on Handel's Passacaglia arrangement, which involves some harmonics for E flat major. For a liver harp tuned in flats, you would mark your pressing points with all your levers down, so nothing pressing on a string. For a pedal harp, some of the notes will be with a natural setting, for example the C, which is the first note, while others, like the following E, will be with a flat. If this is the only piece with harmonics that you practice, you're free to mark them all where you actually need them. But if you've got more pieces with harmonics in different keys, maybe you want to mark all your pressing points for the key of C major, where all the notes are natural, and then keep in mind whether the note that you play is a flat, natural or sharp, and then adjust your position on the string as you go. The best way to practice the harmonics is to extract them all out of the piece first and practice on their own. You can use the PDF for this lesson to do this exercise with me and work on whichever piece you play right now. With my example, we will be looking at the last line of the Passacaglia, where all the harmonics are, and we will start by writing them all out on the top stave. Some of them repeat, so we will leave them out. And then, as we order them from the lowest to the highest, you can see that you need to only know eight notes. And this is the exercise that we'll now use to get familiar with these strings and learn where exactly are all these notes and how do I need to alter my hand position for different strings. So I will maybe play that scale two or three times at the beginning of my practice as part of my warm-up routine, then again just before I play the piece, and then maybe again at the end of my practice. So I spread it out and not overwork my hands or the skin with this particular technique. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Coffee Break Harp and that you will find the tips and the exercises helpful. If you have any questions about the harmonics or anything else harp related, or you just want to let me know that you like this video, let me know in the comments. And remember to subscribe to be the first to see the new episode. Take care for now. Bye!